So today we'll be doing a video called Dave Gettleman, my thoughts after year three. Now I could have waited till after the game tomorrow to do this video, but the fact of the matter is that the Giants might make a decision on like Monday or Tuesday for what his future is. So I figured I might as well get my thoughts in now. It's not like one game is going to change all that much. It would be nice to have a playoff appearance to his name, but at the same time, it is 5-11 and or 6-10. and It's not like the biggest change in the world. So anyway, we'll go through this. And Gettleman is definitely, as people say, one of the most polarizing people around the Giants there's people that will defend him to no end there's people that are you know fair and in between saying he's made some good moves but also some bad moves I lean that he's made a lot more bad moves than good moves and some people that just flat out hate the guy so I'm giving my honest thoughts um, I made a list of all the important moves he's made here over the three years I'm going to grade his 2018 season his 2019 and 2020 seasons put them all together give it a final grade We'll see what the Giants decide to do with this guy um, come Monday or so, even Sunday night if we get some news, but we'll find out what happens. But hopefully you guys enjoy this video. Leave in the comments what you would grade Dave Gutterman for his three years here, and let's get into it. So we'll start back in 2018. I think he was hired in December of 17, but 2018 was his first offseason. And by the way, if I forgot any moves on here, you guys let me know in the comments. I did most of this off the top of my head, so it's kind of hard to remember every single Giants move in the past three years, but I feel like I got most of it, hopefully. I don't think I missed any significant stuff, but let me know. Anyway, 2018, the good moves of 2018, free agency, signing Cody Latimer. I know it wasn't a big move, but it, he was a decent player for two years. I'll give him the win there. Releasing Brad Wing, he wasn't that great. DRC got released. He was kind of you know too old at that point, making too much money. Released Dwayne Harris, who wasn't really that good anymore. They moved on from Weston Richburg. That's what the MO means. Moved on. Moved on from Weston Richburg, who went to the Niners. I think had one decent season, but keeps getting hurt. So that's a good move to move on there. Justin Pugh got hurt one year, but he played most games this year. He's a pretty an average guard. We know what Justin Pugh is. He's an average guard. I still give the Giants credit because he got a big contract, so I'm happy they moved on there. Draft BJ Hill. Look, B.J. Hill has taken a step back to Leonard Williams once he came over here, but B.J. Hill overall has been a solid player for a third-round pick. Yes, Fred Warner right after him would have been a much better pick, but you know I can't hold that against him too much. But we do have B.J. Hill. He's a solid player. I'll give him a win there. Uh, trade, Brett Jones. So, yeah, the Giants traded Brett Jones, the former center, for like, I don't know if it was a sixth or seventh round pick, but Jones has not really amounted to anything, so I guess that was a good move. I'll give him that one. Uh, trade for Riley Dixon. We know that was a great move, and Dixon has taken a step back recently, but overall, since being a giant in 2018 to 2020, has been a really good member of the team, so I like that move, of course, for a seventh round pick. And releasing Roger Lewis, which I just added on here recently because I forgot about that one, but I figured if they moved on from him or released him, but Roger Lewis never turned into anything, so that was a good move. Now for the bad moves, and this was bad. I think we all know 2018 was a really bad offseason for the Giants. I personally and some other people wanted to just start over and rebuild. The Giants decided to go all in for 2018. You can blame John Mary. You can blame, blame Dave Gutterman. I've heard people blame James Betcher even. I've heard every excuse in the book. fact of the matter is the Giants were, you know, they did the wrong thing in 2018. Gettleman was making the moves. Um, you know, Pat, um, not Pat Mara, John Mara was signing off on these moves, and Dave Gettleman was getting, um, you know, some some advice from his coordinators about who they want. You know, I, I tried to argue this. You know, if James Batcher goes to Dave Gettleman and says, "Hey, I really think this Kareem Martin guy can fit my scheme very well." Okay, you take a mental note of that, but you don't have to sign him. Like, you don't have to sign Kareem Martin. You didn't have to sign Olson Pierre. You didn't have to sign Antoine Bethea the next the next year. You're taking advice. You don't have to take it. You, you know, it's basically up to get them and of who he wants. But anyway, um, so the 2018 bad moves. Free agency, Nate Solder, hand raised. I didn't think it was that bad of a move because the Giants needed a left tackle. I preferred Andrew Norwell. We didn't get him. But I figured once he made the move for Nate Solder, I'm like, okay, this guy is a solid player. He's not going to kill us. He's not going to be great, but he's not going to suck. Then he sucked. So... Um, the fact that he sat out this year and his contract got pushed back makes it even worse. The Giants will be paying at least $6 million in dead cap for him up until 2022. So that contract is awful. Um, and I've gotten arguments about this one before. I may have been fine with the contract at the time, but I'm allowed to look back on it three years later and go, wow, that was a terrible contract. And that's exactly what this situation is. So Jonathan Stewart, I don't think many people like that one. Stupid contracts. Kareem Martin, we just went over. Um, Patrick Omame, a guard, awful. He got released in the middle of the season anyway. Uh, Curtis Riley, awful. B.W. Webb, awful. Josh Morrow was awful. Trading Jason Pierre-Paul. This is one that gets disagreed on sometimes. Now, 
when I was making videos back then, I was fine with this trade under the belief that the Giants were rebuilding at that time. I was like, okay, JPP is not going to be part of the future here in a couple of years when we're, when we're good again. But I was like, okay, trading JPP for a third round pick and getting rid of the contract makes sense. But the Giants go ahead and trade for Alec Ogletree like a week later. Like, that's where, that's where it lost me. I was like, what are we doing here? Because, like, I'll admit, I was fine with the Ogletree trade because I was excited about it. He was the best linebacker we had here in a long time. I was like, I'll give this move a chance. But I also knew at the same time that Ogletree had a really down year for the Rams the year before. And I'm like, is he trending downwards or was it one outlier of a bad year? The truth was he was trending downwards. Alec Ogletree was awful here. So... Making that Jason Pierre-Paul trade was bad looking back on it because he's had a really nice career in Tampa Bay. And when you basically take his contract and trade for Alec Ogletree, it's kind of like a lateral move. I know they saved maybe a 2 or $3 million by making that move, but at the same time, you might as well just kept Jason Pierre-Paul and not trade it for Ogletree. So looking back on it, very bad move, I have to be honest. Moving on from Ross Cockrell, he missed one year but was really good in 20, I don't know if it was 18 or 19. He had one solid year. He missed one year with the fractured leg, but I kind of wish we kept him. Drafting Saquon Barkley, it's one I've been very outspoken about over the years, but I think most people now understand why it wasn't the best move. I still hope the guy comes back and has a great year because as long as you wear a Giants jersey, I'm going to root for you. But I just think it was really a bad move. The Giants should have rebuilt. Um, they, you don't build a team around a running back. It's just not how you do it. And there, there's so many reasons why that move was bad. So hopefully the guy comes back healthy next year, but I would never agree with that move. Will Hernandez... I'm only saying it because I like Will Hernandez. I was my favorite pick of that draft, but Will Hernandez is basically taking a back seat to a fifth round rookie in Shane Lemieux this year. So like Shane, um, Will Hernandez is a fine player. I think he's an average starter, but he's even getting, you know, sat basically behind a fifth round rookie who can't even pass box. So how good can Will Hernandez even be? If he's not helping this team in year three, I can't really say it's a good draft pick, you know. Um, Lorenzo Carter, a lot of potential there, and he might have had a breakout year this year if he st uh, stayed healthy. He tore his Achilles, which is very tough to come back from, so hopefully he does. He should be here next year on his fourth year, but um, he has not made that much of an impact yet where I can call that a good pick. So right now it's a bad move. It has a chance to change into a good move, but for now I really can't say that was a good move. Kyle Laletta, um, you know, um, well, I was going to say Pro Bowl. What is it? Senior Bowl MVPs. Are guys that get taken by the Giants? I think Davis Webb, Kyle Aletta, and I feel Daniel Jones. Like we we take all the Senior Bowl MVPs, and um, Kyle Aletta was no difference. The only thing he's known for was throwing uh, 0 for 5 in that um, Washington football game, and um, and also the traffic ticket. That was like the only thing that he's known for. He got released. He's bounced around from like the Eagles, the Falcons, some other teams. So, you know, that was a bad pick. It was like a fourth round pick. I don't know how much Pat Shermer, you know, wanted that pick. But once again, Pat Shermer doesn't make the picks. It's Dave Gettleman taking suggestions from people. He's the one making the pick. So it's whatever. Um, RJ McIntosh. I like McIntosh. I don't know why he doesn't play. And maybe the Giants are saving him for next year. But McIntosh, when he plays, I feel like he's a productive player. So if the Giants move on from Tomlinson or Leonard Williams, we might see more of McIntosh on the fourth year of his rookie deal, hopefully. But I don't think he's that bad of a player. But he's done nothing, so I can't say it was a good pick. Um, Sam Beal, uh, what was it, the supplemental draft, whatever it's called, awful pick, you know, guy's 175 pounds, had injury uh, history in college, gets drafted by the Giants, he played six games in two seasons, he sat out this year for COVID uh, reasons, but he's been terrible, I really cannot say, and people are like, well, we don't know about Sam Beal yet, I am pretty, pretty sure that guy is not going to be a good player, I hope I'm wrong, because, you know, I do want him to work out, we need an outside corner number two, but I have not seen anything from that guy to make me believe that Sam Beal is the real deal, so I have to put that as a bad move. Trey are releasing Romeo Aquara. So this one pisses me off because Romeo Aquara was a guy probably making six figures. He was like, I don't know what uh, round pick he was for Jerry Reese, but he was not making much money, probably under a million dollars. And for some reason, just to get Reese's guys out the door, get them and release his Romeo Aquara. And if you have not kept up with Romeo Aquara with the Lions, he had the first year in 2018 had like a seven and a half sack season, which would have led the Giants that year, by the way. He took a step back last year, didn't play a lot, but this year is back up to like eight sacks, two forced fumbles, a safety. Romeo Aquara would have been the best pass rusher on the Giants right now. So I don't know why we released that guy for no reason. It makes no sense. Um, people are like, well, he sucked. Well, uh, here's the thing. When he was a rookie back in 2016, 
16 and, and filled in for Jason Pierre-Paul, he proved to us he can play. He wasn't JPP. He wasn't great, but he proved to us he can play. I remember that first game he filled in for in that Dallas game where we won the game like 10, was it 10-6 or something? The, uh, the Slant Odell game, I think it was that game. He came in and played really well, Romeo Aquara. So I don't know why we released him. Wasn't happy about it, but... He's having a good, uh, nice career now with the Lions. He's playing with his brother, so good for him. But it's just, I don't know why we released that guy. And Darian Thompson. Look, Darian Thompson's not going to kill you. It wasn't like the worst move in the world. But he's built a pretty solid career with the Cowboys. He's not playing this week, tomorrow. But he's had a solid career with the uh, Cowboys. The Giants have had safety issues the past, you know, two years. Not this year as much, but 2018-2019, atrocious play at safety, whether it was Curtis Riley, who had no interest in tackling people, Antoine Bethea. We could have used a Darian Thompson for depth reasons, but we released him, so just a bad move. The team was 5-11 that year after going all in. They weren't even rebuilding that year, so to go 5-11, make all those bad moves, the JPP stuff, the Saquon Barkley, it's an F-. I don't even know if they give out F- minuses, but I'm giving out an F- minus because that offseason was literally as bad as it can get, and you can blame John Mara, but the, the truth is part of it's Dave Gutterman as well. Dave Gutterman was signing these players. He was the one basically picking the uh, picking to draft these guys. I know John Mara has to sign off on that once again, but it's really it, – John Mara is not our GM. He's not the one picking the players. So I give Gutterman – a lot of blame for that. It's You could say 50-50, but I, I still think Gettleman deserves a good amount of blame for what happened to this team in 2018. So awful. F- minus to start off, but on the bright side, things do get better going forward. So now for 2019. This is the, um, for most people, the official start of the rebuild, although Gettleman admitted after 2019 that they were trying to win and rebuild at the same time, but I guess when you draft a quarterback in the first round, that really gives away your rebuild. Okay, so 2019, good move. So they started off bad, of course, during that year. They trade Damon Harris and Eli Apple. Good moves. I was still surprised they got a fourth round pick for Apple. Damon Harrison, you were not going to get much for because his position is not really valued too high by most general managers. Um, that's just a run stuffer. So they got like a fifth round pick for him. I was fine with that, honestly. Trading Odell Beckham, one I was definitely salty about at first, but I think based on the way Odell's career has went, he did have a thousand yards last year. Terrace is ACL this year, and you hate to grade it on an injury, but at the same time, Jarrell Peppers has played really well in that spot. Um, I do like O'Shane Zimenez. We'll find out about him in the future, but um, right now you'd have to admit the Giants do, they, they probably made out a lot better by making that move, and they got Dexter Lawrence, so that's one I forgot as well. So, yeah, I mean, look, this is a, uh, you can have a different opinion about it because, like, Daniel Jones still doesn't have a wide receiver one, and it's been hurting him so far, but, you know, if things went the way they um, went now, Odell wouldn't even be here, so I, I get it from that perspective as well. I still think the Giants won that trade, even though I was mad about it at first, but um, right now it is looking good, but the Giants do have to get a wide receiver one. That, those are some tough shoes to fill, and, and Golden Tate was not the answer, of course. Anyway, trading Olivier Vernon. Vernon's had a nice year this year, but I think getting Kevin Zeitler that was a move I was a fan of at the time like you know getting a really good right guard he does make a good amount of money but Olivier Vernon did as well and you know so far Zeitler has been a very solid right guard for this team so he hasn't been perfect but a really good right guard for an offensive line that needed a good right guard Marcus Golden really good signing um you know, 10 sacks last year, traded him for a six-round pick this year. I feel like the Giants handled the whole Marcus Golden thing really well. Mike Remmers filled in at right tackle last year. I think Remmers played like, you know, average. He had one debacle of a game, which was that Cardinals game when they gave up like eight sacks. He was a big part of that. But other than that, Mike Remmers was fine, honestly. He now plays for the Chiefs, you know, having himself a pretty, you know, nice career, honestly. Um, Dexter Lawrence, number 17 overall. I can't sit here and call Dexter Lawrence a bad player. I would sound very stupid if that was the case, but you guys know I'm a big positional value guy. I don't really want to spend a 17th overall first round pick on a primary run stuffing defensive tackle, but at the same time, he's very good at his job. Like, you know, I guess guys like that, I don't want to say, I don't want to say don't grow on trees because they kind of do, but I would prefer to draft a defensive tackle in the third or fourth round or sign one in free agency. I just don't really, I didn't love the pick because of the positional value, but Dexter Lawrence has been a good player so far. I would have rather taken a guy like Montez Sweat with Washington because he gets to the quarterback and makes more game-changing plays, but, you know, I can't sit here and call it a bad pick. I just, it just wasn't my preference, I'll put it that way. Darius Slayton, a, I think, fifth-round pick or sixth, whatever it was, he's, you know, look, he's taking a step back in, in some ways this year. 
I think we've all come to the realization that he's not a wide receiver one. I think we get that now, but he has to work on some stuff. His contested catches, his hands, of course, getting separation. Like, there's things to work on, but there's a lot there. Like, he had a good year last year. So, I mean, he's taken a bit of a step back, but there is something there. I think for where he was drafted, it's still a good pick. He just has to work on some stuff. Adding Caden Smith, I think he was added in, like, what, week three or something from the Niners. Um, Came in last year for the injured Angram in the second half of the year. Played really well in certain games. He hasn't done too, too much this year. I mean, he's been used as a blocker in a lot of cases this year, but Caden Smith's been fine. I think it's a good find. It's not the best find ever, but it's a good find. I'll give him that. Now, for the Will C stuff, I'll get to that at the end. Never mind. We'll just do bad moves now. Bad moves, trading BJ Goodson for a seventh round pick. I mean, BJ, BJ Goodson's a solid player. He cannot cover, but he's a really good tackler, and he's been a pretty good player for the Browns this year, honestly. And we have a guy like David Mayo, a Dave Gettleman guy, who's just not good at all. So I'd prefer to have kept BJ Goodson over a guy like that. So, I mean, look, it's not a move that's going to kill the Giants, but at the same time, I just wish we uh, kept Goodson instead of getting a guy like David Mayo. Not franchising Landon Collins, another guy who got injured, a torn Achilles this year, I believe it was. So, I was mad because the Giants could have traded him during the season the year prior and gotten maybe a third round pick, maybe even a second round pick. And then people say like, oh, you got the supplemental pick. Well, the thing is like, that's at the end of of the third round. You're talking like, you know, pick 100, pick 102, 105. If they traded him for a third round pick, they could have gotten like pick number 70 something, 80 something, even 60 something. Like that would have been the better move. You know, gaining yourself 30 spots in the draft rather than just letting him walk for nothing. So I was not a fan of that move. I wanted to franchise him for one year maybe trade him the next year franchise and trade him do something like that but just to let a guy like Landon Collins walk who got a ton of money from Washington I just did not like the use of that asset that was just it was just way too easy like why are you letting a, a talent like Landon Collins just walk away for nothing like at least sign and trade him or something I don't know franchise and trade him didn't like the way that was handled um trading for the impending free agent Leonard Williams while being two and six so when you look at Leonard Williams this year um he has had a really good year and i will say when that when that move was made i came on and said i like that move i did like that move but once the giants didn't give him a contract extension in the offseason that's when i turned on it i was like what are we doing here like i really wanted to extend this guy for a reasonable contract a 12 million dollar per year contract i wanted like a four-year 48 million dollar deal for leonard williams and i would have been very satisfied no complaining from me but now there's no franchise tag, or we, we had the franchise tag, $17 million or 16, whatever it was. And Leonard Williams knows he has all the leverage in the world because the Giants traded a third and a fifth or a third and a fourth, whatever it turns out to be, for this guy. So Leonard Williams is not going to sign for anything less than he feels he deserves. Now the Giants are kind of stuck in this spot of like, okay, well, we either have to overpay this guy or he's leaving. Like that's really what it comes down to. So we'll see what they do in this offseason for him. If he does leave, the Giants get their fourth round pick. If the Giants sign him, um, I think they get their fifth round pick. The Jets get either or, depending on if we sign him or not. But I will never believe in trading for an impending free agent when you're two and six. I could see if the Giants were six and two and were going into the playoffs and needed an extra piece on defense. When you're two and six, what are you doing? I just don't get it. I know Leonard Williams is a good player. It's not what I'm saying, but the way they just handled that whole thing for being a two and six team for a guy that's going to be a free agent. And think about it. Leonard Williams was not a Joe Douglas guy. That was a Mike McCagnon guy. This is a new GM. So chances are they weren't even going to franchise him. The Giants could have waited till free agency and took their shot on Leonard Williams. But unfortunately, that was not the case. And they lost a third round pick for it. But I guess on the right side, the, the guy the Jets took, uh, Ashton Davis, has not turned out that good. But the Giants could have picked someone else. Maybe the Giants would have picked someone much better in the third round or something. So that sucks, but I guess it is what it is. Leonard Williams, at least, is a good player. He's not crap, so it's not the worst move in the world. I just don't like the way they handled that asset right there. Um, Not trading Janoris Jenkins. I mean, that's one that could be argued, and people said, well, no one wants Janoris Jenkins. Well, it seems like the Saints wanted him pretty badly because they picked him up off waivers or whatever and then signed them this past offseason. So I guess somebody wanted him. Um, They could have gotten a sixth or seventh round pick for Jenkins. Once again, it's an asset that got away for nothing. I'd rather have taken a draft pick for and this was over a a slur on Twitter that should not have been said, but the Giants basically had enough at that point and released him. You can tell Janoris did not want to be here. He was not a fan of the losing culture that was going on here. So I get it, but at least try to get the asset for that guy. Antoine Bethea, um, this is one of my favorite Gettleman quotes. I'm paraphrasing, but he, he basically said one time, I don't take age into consideration when signing players. And I kind of just laughed about that one because I don't know how you don't take age into consideration, but look at his track record. He signed Jared Allen in Carolina. He signed Cortland Finnegan. He signed uh, Charles Tillman. He signed Antoine Bethea here. He signed, um, who was that guy? William Gay. 
Jonathan Stewart. Like, he signs all the old players hoping they still have something left. Julius Peppers was actually a good pickup for Gettleman back in Carolina. I think I'll give him credit for that one. Yeah, it was him, right? I'm trying to think if it was Herney or him. I think it was Gettleman who picked up Peppers. That was a good move. But for the most part, picking up these old-ass players doesn't really work. And when your GM says, I don't take age into consideration when signing guys, it's like, did you really just say that? Like, really? Like, you know, I, I don't like that. So Antoine Bethea at 34 years old being our starting free safety, not good. Definitely was not good last year. So that was definitely a terrible move. And to find out they brought in a guy like Trey Boston for a workout. They didn't sign him. They they brought, they they brought they stuck with, um, with Bethea instead. I was like, what are we doing here? But anyway, that's over and done with. Spencer Pulley still on the roster, doesn't play. He played one game last year. He was not good. The Giants are paying him like $8 million. It's a good amount. Not a good move, in my opinion. Golden Tate. This is one that made no sense to me at the time. I always, I've always, i always loved Golden Tate as a player, but when you're signing him at 31 years old on a team that's rebuilding, I'm like, what the, what the hell is this? Like, why are we signing Golden Tate? And you had Sterling Shepard, who's a lot better in the slot than he is on the outside. So now you're pushing Shepard to the outside, a place he's like, you know, not as good at, and you're just giving Golden Tate slot snaps. It just didn't make sense to me. Golden Tate had, you know, not an attitude problem, but, you know, he was um, he was ruffling some feathers at some point this year. I mean, we just have not heard good things about him. He started a fight in that Rams game after the game to put some of his teammates in danger, possibly. I, I just have not liked him as a giant, honestly. He's made some big plays for us, but it's been more of a headache than anything. David and Mayo, oh no, I skipped one. Olsen Pierre, I talked about this one before. James Betcher may have suggested that one. Get him in. It went through with it. Olsen Pierre, I think, had one good game for us, maybe two, but he wasn't anything. David Mayo, he's still here. The Giants signed him to a contract extension. He's not really that good. Um, I don't like what I see from him, so no. DeAndre Baker in the draft. Um, once again, victim of saying I, that he was my favorite pick of the draft, DeAndre Baker. I love the positional value at cornerback. I thought DeAndre Baker had a very high ceiling, a very athletic guy. Problem was, he never got it up here. And, you know, I, I'm always saying that as a fan. I was not the one who interviewed DeAndre Baker, but the Giants maybe should have realized, like, this guy is not, you know, a guy we should trade up in the first round for. Um, it was a smart move by Gettleman because they got the fifth year option on him, but, you know, he didn't even make it here for two years, so I guess that doesn't matter. So, look, I mean, I know it's not Gettleman's fault that all this stuff happened with DeAndre Baker, but at the same time, you kind of have to realize who you're drafting based on personality. Like we as fans don't get to interview the players. I just I just watched DeAndre Baker on film and said, okay, this guy's a really talented player. I never interviewed him. Like Gettleman probably did. So I don't know. You got you kind of have to realize what you're getting into here. And people just say like there was no indication that this would have happened. But the guy was falling asleep in meetings. People had work ethic concerns coming out of college. Some warning signs were there. It wasn't this serious, like pulling a gun on people, but at the same time, the, the warning signs were there as a football player. The Giants still took that chance, and it didn't work. Um, Ryan Conley. I mean, Ryan Conley had three and a half good games, and Giants fans won the crown him as the next Luke Keekley, but he wasn't really that good. He plays for Minnesota now, not doing too much, I don't think, and tore his ACL, which was unfortunate. Bad timing there, but he ended up being not so great of a player. Maybe he has a career in, in Minnesota or something, but has not happened yet. Corey Ballantyne, a guy that some Giants fans wanted to be the outside cornerback, um, didn't work out. <laughs> I never really saw it with him. I liked him from an athleticism standpoint. I was like, wow, this guy's really athletic. Just never got it from a technique standpoint. So now he's with the Jets, I think. He probably won't amount to anything, so that probably wasn't a good pick, honestly. Uh, George Asafo Ajayi, uh, a guy we took in the seventh round, same with Chris Slayton. Didn't really turn out too well. Um, you know, offensive lineman was Asafo Ajayi. Chris Slayton was a DT. Um didn't work out, but they're seventh round pick, so it is what it is. The we'll see section, and this is the biggest one, of course, Daniel Jones, your franchise quarterback, or supposed to be franchise quarterback. We don't know what Daniel Jones is after year two. The the truth of the matter is he's probably going to get year three. I think he deserves to get year three here because Jason Garrett was just the worst thing that happened to him. I think he deserves year three, Daniel Jones. The Giants should give it to him, but if they get a new GM on Monday or you know fire Gettleman and go with a different guy, they might move on from Jones. You never know, but I think there's a 95% chance, and if we're up to me personally, I'd rather keep Daniel Jones here than go for someone new. Um, so we'll see about that, but he's, hey, he's had positive signs, some negative signs. There's some stuff that you hope that Jones grows out of, but it hasn't happened yet. But he has looked good the past month. I will say that. Even though he's injured, he has looked better. He's not making stupid decisions as much. So I will say that. He's looking better. Got to hope it continues to be more consistent down the road. O'Shane Zimenez, he was like one of my favorite picks of that draft. I love that guy. Um, he didn't do much this year. He had some flashes last year. Had like four and a half sacks in his first year. 
I, ho- I was hoping he'd play a lot more this year, but I, I think they gave um, Fackrell and Lorenzo Carter the starting outside linebacker duty. Or no, it, went, it might have been Marcus Golden, but what I'm trying to say is O'Shane Zimenez was not really a starter at any point this year, and he got hurt, so that's what we got to wait and see on. Um, if he's cut next year, I would not be shocked, but I hope the Giants give him a chance. And for Julian Love, we'll see. I mean, I like Julian Love. He's you know I interviewed him um, back on Fireside. He's a good dude, but... Um, It hasn't really came to fruition yet. He hasn't really been the best option for the Giants. They tried to move him to safety. I always wish they put him at outside cornerback. Maybe the Giants are playing him out of place. I don't know. But at the same time, it hasn't been the greatest move yet. It was a fourth round pick, I believe. But Love's a solid player. He's decent. He's just like, you know, he's not he's nothing great. He won't turn into an all pro, but hopefully he's a guy that can help a team win in football games down the line. But so far, it has not been a great pick. So that's year two for Gettleman. Um, I would give the offseason grade a C, or the season grade in general, I should say, a C. They went 4-12 and the first year of a rebuild, but as Gettleman said, they tried to win and rebuild. When you're trying to win and rebuild, you should not go 4-12. and And winning and rebuilding is stupid anyway, so I don't even try and do that. But I would give it a C. You can say C+. Plus. You can argue it's even worse, but I think C is a fair grade for that one. So with that being said, let's get on to 2020 now. All right, so for 2020, not as much here because there's, you know, we're not too far enough in time yet to see how these moves turn out. A lot of we'll see here, of course. But the good moves of 2020, James Bradbury has been unbelievable. I think that's mostly a Gettleman move because that's a guy he formerly drafted. He knows him. I think he figured he'd fit this scheme well. I'm sure he went to Patrick Graham and asked about him, but at the same time, this is mostly a Gettleman move. So James Bradbury has been, I think, by far his best free agent signing, honestly. Blake Martinez could have been Patrick Graham influence, but a good job by Gettleman to sign off on that and take his advice and, and sign Blake Martinez. Logan Ryan. Um, Logan Ryan's been a good player. I mean, they picked him up late. Um, definitely happened because of the DeAndre Baker situation and the Xavier McKinney injury, but at the same time, he's still here, so they benefited from that. Kyler Fackrell, a guy I wanted, actually, but Kyler Fackrell has been a really good player for us. I mean, the first month and a half, he was really good. Took a step back. He's now back from injury in Week 17. Hopefully makes an impact here, but I think for how much we're paying him, which is like slightly over a million dollars, I think um, Kyler Fackrell has been a good investment. Cam Flynn a guy that I've wanted two years ago or even three years ago, but Cam Fleming was a pretty good stopgap type player. He's been fine at right half. He's not been great, but also not awful. He's had some bad moments, but also some really good moments. So I can't say he's been, you know, completely terrible. I think he's been a pretty decent player, but Cam Fleming is a nice guy to have. He can play both tackle spots. I'd like to have him back next year, of course, but he's on a one-year deal, so we'll see. Austin Johnson, I think a former second-round pick of the Titans. He plays maybe, I don't know, 20 snaps a game, whatever it is, but when he's in there, he makes an impact. He's had some impact plays this year, a nice find. Um, no one, He's not a guy I really knew about. Uh, before this, but he's actually a pretty decent player, so a nice find there. Darnay Holmes, I mean, you can say this is a we'll see, but I feel like I've seen enough from Darnay Holmes to, to know he'll be a pretty solid slot corner in the NFL. Um, you guys know I love that pick, but I, I think he'll be fine. He's shown enough to me that, to think that he'll be a good slot corner one day, so we'll see how his young career turns out, but um, so far it's looking pretty good. For the bad moves, free agency Colt McCoy, I mean, we weren't thinking too much about this one because we were hoping Daniel Jones played all 16. That was not the case. And it has not turned out that great. Colt McCoy is okay, but you can do better as a backup or for a backup. And the Giants definitely have to improve in that category next year. For the draft, Chris Williamson, um, you know, he's a guy I was not really a fan of. I don't know why we drafted him. I didn't know much about him, but I went back and watched two full games of him. He must have missed like 10 tackles, and I was like, what, what are we doing here? Like, I don't know why we took him, but he is not on the team anymore, so that was a quick uh, cut bait situation right there. For we'll see, Andrew Thomas, you guys know I love that pick. I, I did like Jedrick Wills a bit more, but I think Andrew Thomas has a chance to be a franchise left tackle. I still think he has that chance. I think we have to give him time. I know people don't like him and want to write him off already, but I think Andrew Thomas deserves more time. He has shown enough stretches. He had like a he had like a four or five game stretch where he was playing phenomenal. If he just plays more consistently, he'll be great. He just has to do it more consistently. At least we know he can do it. It's not like he just hasn't shown anything yet. He's shown games where he's been great. So he has to do it more consistently. But once he figures it out, I think he'll be great. So I'm happy about that. Xavier McKinney, um Look, I'll be honest, he did not play well in that Ravens game. He missed a lot of tackles, took some bad angles, but I just hope that a lot of it is because he's 
you know, freshly back from injury. He played no preseason. He's going straight from college to the NFL. It's like not an easy transition. So I hope by next year we see a different Xavier McKinney. But I'll admit it's it's so far a little discouraging from what I've seen. I'm not giving up on him, but you know, he looked really bad last week. I'm not gonna lie. But hopefully he gets better as time goes on and has a full off season of working with this team. Matt Pair, a pick I was a big fan of, but you know, we've seen ups and downs from him. He has shown vulnerability to get beat on the outside from speed rushers. But, you know, other than that, he's been pretty solid. I really can't complain for a third-round pick out of UConn. It's like, what else could you expect? I think he's had a pretty good year for, you know, what the expectations were. So I think it's a good pick so far, but we'll see. Shane Lemieux, um, really good run blocker. Doesn't know how to pass block too well, but um, that's a we'll see pick. I was happy about it. I thought that was good value. I mean, when I was doing my draft research, I figured Lemieux was a third or fourth-round pick for sure. We got him in the fifth round. I like the value, a hog molly type. Of guy, but if he ever fixes that pass blocking, he'd be really, he could be really good because he's a really good run blocker. But we just have to have a complete version, a um, a version of Shane Lemieux that can do it all. So I mean, once we get that, he'll be fine. But right now, we have not seen it yet. Cam Brown, the lanky, athletic guy, he's had. You know, we had a game-saving tackle against the Bengals this year on a punt return, so there is that. He's shown some flashes of being good, but doesn't play too, too much. But when he's out there, he's decent. He's had some games where he's invisible, too, so there is that. It's just a typical rookie season for him. Carter Coughlin, same thing. He's had up-and-down moments. He's had moments where he's looked really good, moments where he doesn't really show up too much. So I think we'll find out more about those two in year two. Uh, TJ Brunson, um, you know, doesn't do too much. I, I kind of wish um, one of my offseason wishes is that we cut David Mayo, save that money, and put TJ Brunson in his spot as like a backup linebacker number three. We'll find out what happens. But TJ Brunson's fine. He's just a guy that's going to tackle. He's not going to really uh, cover. And he's not going to be a guy in coverage that's going to do too much. He's not, doesn't have the best range, not the best speed, but a typical like 1980s type linebacker. I don't expect much from him, but he could be a solid special teams player. Uh, Tay Crowder, this is one of my favorite picks of the draft honestly I know it was the last pick of the draft but I saw the athleticism I like what I saw from him he hasn't been too too great lately but he had some nice moments this year um I think he had an interception one game that was called back the Rams one even though it looked like an interception but whatever um he's had a really really nice season for a Mr. Irre Irrelevant like he's done more than most Mr. Irrelevants do in their careers and he's you know still a rookie so that is a positive I think Tay Crowder could have a spot on this team in the future as a second or third linebacker. I prefer number three linebacker, but um, if he becomes even better in the offseason, we'll see what happens. But Tay Crowder has been a pretty solid Mr. Irrelevant pick so far. So this wasn't the best offseason ever, but at the same time, I actually forgot to include the franchise tag of Leonard Williams. So there I forgot one right there, but they franchise tag Leonard Williams. I mean... You know, it's look, I, I didn't want that to be the case, and I forgot Graham Gano as well. That's another one. See, I'm remembering now. Graham Gano was awesome. Awesome, you know, pickup right there. It's probably a Gettleman guy right there, but awesome pick for Graham Gano. And for Leonard Williams, I mean, I, I don't want to pay him $16, 17000000 million, but he has played really well this year, so I will give him that. I just hope they uh, work out a long term extension this offseason, so I guess we'll wait and see. So. Their team record, I had it as five and nine at this point. It's either going to be six and ten or five and eleven. So it's one or the other. It's either playoffs or no playoffs. I mean, you know, we'll find out tomorrow in, in 24 hours. But um, yeah, that's pretty much it. I mean, there's a lot of disagreement about Gettleman. Um, you can say things are trending in the right direction, which I guess is the case. But at the same time, I just have seen so many mistakes here the past three years where I'm like. I don't know if I want this guy as the GM of my football team. Like, I, I just think he's so stuck in the past. I want a guy who actually uses analytics and didn't mock them when he first came here. I want a guy that understands the positional value because Gettleman does not give a damn about that based on his love for defensive tackles and love for running backs. I mean, he does not care about that stuff. So I think we need somebody that's more just um, – just understands the modern day game more than Gettleman does. Not to say that he doesn't know anything, because Gettleman can clearly scout some players. Like he has, he has a talent for scouting certain players. Like the picking up, picking up certain players like Caden Smith and and finding like Tay Crowder and, and finding Darius Slayton. It's not easy to do. I mean, that's really a tough. That's a tough thing to do. I give him a lot of credit for that one. But there's moves where he just, especially the bigger moves where he just makes like some of the most questionable decisions you'll ever see. And I'm like, I don't, like, you know, not every GM is going to get every move right. And I understand that. And people accuse me of thinking that. I have never thought that. I know that GM is not, if you hit on 70% of your GM picks, you're going to be like a Hall of Famer. Like that's, I know that. It's like the same thing as like drafting in fantasy football. I mean, most of your picks looking back on it, if you look back at your draft results are going to be crap. But like at the same time, you got to hit on certain picks that end up being really good. Like when you look at the Giants roster, how many elite players has Dave Gettleman drafted? Like, None. I mean, maybe Saquon Barkley if he's healthy, but like none. You know what I mean? We've had some high picks here. So 
We'll see how it turns out, but there's been too many misses for me. I just don't like his philosophies as a GM, but you guys can disagree. I'm sure I'm sure some people will agree, some will disagree, but we'll find out in the coming days what happens. But I will say, I tweeted this today. Give me one year of Dave Gettleman over um, hiring Kevin Abrams or promoting Kevin Abrams, who's like now the, uh, the cap manager for the Giants. I don't want to see that. I don't want to see three years of Kevin Abrams. I just would rather have one more year of Gettleman and see what happens. But... I think it should come down to Joe Judge's decision. We'll see if it's Joe Judge's decision, but um, I guess we'll find out what the Giants do in the coming days. But anyway, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Hopefully you guys found this fair. Um, I think it's fair. I mean, giving the... We all knew 2018 was trash. Whether it was Mara or Gettleman, whoever you want to blame more, it was trash. It was one of the worst off-seasons you could have. 2019 was average at best. I gave it a C. I think it's very fair. And then this year was an A. I think it's very fair as well. So, I don't know. I, I think it's pretty fair. Anyway... Let me know what you guys think. Hopefully you enjoyed, and I will talk to you guys next time.